Welcome to the Fem2PC YouTube channel. In this video, we will be installing FreeBSD 13.2, which was recently released on April 11, 2023, into a virtual box on Windows 11. The first things we'll need to do is to go out and grab the virtual box and the FreeBSD ISO file. So let's first get our FreeBSD. We'll go to the FreeBSD project homepage and we'll click the download FreeBSD button and scroll down a little bit for a 13.2 release. And we're going to, need to get the 64 bit version, which is called AMD 64. And we'll get the disk one ISO and we'll grab the compressed image. Okay, now that that's downloading, we'll open up another tab here and let's search for VirtualBox. Check our downloads. I can see here they have a new version 7. Okay, let's just go for the new one. We're running this on Windows 11, so it's a Windows host. And we're downloading. Okay, so let's go to our download folder. And let's install VirtualBox. Okay, this is the Oracle VirtualBox setup wizard. We'll just keep the default options, click Next. Warning, network interfaces, oh, that could be temporarily disconnected from the network. Uh, it's missing Python core utilities, dependencies, blah, blah, blah. Next, install. <clears throat> Okay, we're doing this in real time. So here it says start Oracle VM VirtualBox after installation. And our downloads have completed. So here is our FreeBSD. And what we want to do is we're going to use 7-zip to extract this. Extract in place. And this will give us our FreeBSD installation ISO file. No, we don't need any of this. Let's just get going here. First thing, let's create a new virtual machine. And we're going to call it uh, FBSD one three two and it's a 64-bit freebsd next and next okay for our hardware setting we're going to use two gigabytes of ram and we'll use two cpus see over here two cpus next this is our virtual disk 16 giga is plenty so let's just go with that And finish. Okay, next, let's check settings. Our system setting, we're not going to have a floppy, and we're going to make that go down to the bottom of the list. And we're going to boot first from a hard disk, which will be empty at first, so it'll fall back to the optical and install FreeBSD. The next time it reboots, it will install from the hard disk. 
Um, for storage, we need to click on the empty CD and we need to choose a disk file. And it's in our download ISO. Okay, so now the ISO has been mounted as a CD image. Our audio, we don't need. Networking, we're going to use a bridge mode. That way we'll just get our IP from our DHCP server on the home network. Serial port, don't need. USB, leave. Everything okay. Now we're ready to start. Start our machine. And we'll use a normal start. Okay, here's the FreeBSD boot screen. Uh, this is VirtualBoss asking me about a mouse. I'm going to capture the mouse while I'm within the window. If you want to leave the mouse out of the window, see it's stuck here, can't get out. Then just touch the control key and it gets out. All right, so we've got three options here. You can install, you can go to drop to the shell, or you can boot up a live CD. This is pretty useful if you have a USB installer and you just want to get to FreeBSD really quickly. But we're going to install, so we'll hit enter. We're going to continue with the US keyboard default. And we'll give our machine a local domain name. Actually, you can't use a mouse. This is a totally non-mouse system. We use the arrow key and space key to deselect. We don't need the 32-bit libs. And we'll install the source tree. Okay, enter. And we're only running with 2 gig of memory. So we won't use ZFS. We'll use UFS. ZFS should not run with less than 8 gig. If it was a real server, that wouldn't be a problem. And we're going to use the entire disk. And we're going to use the GPT partitioning. And hit enter again to finish. Okay, and commit. Until you click on commit, the disk has not been touched. If you were in a real hardware environment. Okay, the uh, extractions are taking place. That's the base system. This would include all of the bin, S bin, user bin, user S bin, all the libraries. Then the kernel, which would be under the boot directory. And then we're putting in the source tree. This would also be under slash user, user source. Okay, after these are extracted, the BSD installer will drop to the shell and will enter the password for root. twice. Next comes our network interface configuration. We just press enter because we only have one interface. It's an Intel. This is actually from the virtual box, its interface, which is linked to the internal Realtek Giga interface in the hardware. Would you like IPv4 for this interface? Yes. DHCP, yes. This will get a DHCP from my home network. 
IPv4, tab over, arrow over, no. I'm going to add a Google DNS server as secondary. Tab to OK and press Enter. Next is for time zone setting. I'm in Asia. I'm in the free China country of Taiwan. And we can skip, skip. Okay, local unbound, I don't need that. SSH, definitely need. Moust, uh, this will not have a GUI. If you do, you can add this later. Uh, I want to get date when I boot and keep date up to date through NTP. And no dump. Uh, for PowerD on real hardware, you could select this, but it's not recommended on VirtualBox. So we'll leave that in, just press enter. Okay, for hardening, I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to clear the temp when I reboot. I also want to disable the syslog server and disable send mail because we're not sending mail. And disable dtrace. Okay, then enter. Would you like to add a user account? Uh, you need a user account if you want to SSH into the machine. So yes. Uh, the first user ID is going to be 1000, actually 1001 probably. Um, we'll just leave the default. Uh, log in group default. And we want to add ourselves to the wheel group so that we can not only SSH in, but we can go to use su command to get to root from remote. And Operator means we can shut down or restart the system without going to SU. The group oper operator. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Operator. Default login class, default shell, home directory default, default, use password, empty password, no, random, no, enter password. Lock the count out, no, okay. Everything's okay. And yes, the UID is 1001 for the first user. Yes, add another, no. Everything's basically done here, so we just exit and we don't need to make any more modifications and we're gonna reboot. Okay, as I said, it will now boot from the hard disk, which is the first boot disk, first boot device. There we go. We can press uh, enter to bypass that. On the initial boot, we're going to generate the SSHD keys, private and public keys. We got our DHCP. Our IP address is 1.17 and our host keys have been generated. So let's log in first with root. Enter our root password and set up to install software. We use a package update so that it will fetch so I say yes. The package system differs from the port system and it, it downloads pre-compiled binary files. It stalls very quickly. Uh, it won't keep you in the cutting edge of the, the latest, but 
it does work very well, especially for a virtual box. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is is do a upgrade, package upgrade. And everything's already done. So, how to install through package system? It's very simple. Let's first say I want to install Python. I want to do some Python programming. So, we do pkg. Inst well, first let's find out what our packages are. So, we do a search. P-Y-T-H-O-N. And I want Python 3. So, let's search Python 3. And from here, I can see that uh, Python three point nine point sixteen underline two is the latest of the three point nine version. So let's do, and the name is Python thirty nine. So PKG install, and if you don't want to be prompted, you can say dash yes dot dash y but we'll we'll see what it does here without py thun 39 okay so it's showing me that there are dependencies the get text the index info blah 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 and the python program so proceed yes each of those packages are downloaded binary and uncompressed and installed. And Python is installed very quickly. There we go. Now, I know that the that it's the Python binary command in the system is Python 3.9. And there's the proof. But what if I wanted to just be able to type Python? That won't work. So let's make it work. Because this is a program which has been installed after the base system, all programs will be in user local. And Python should be in the bin folder. So let's check it out. There it is, Python 3.9 executable file. So let's make a symbolic link we use ln s is symbolic and we're going to say p y t h o n and it's going to link to p y t h o n 3.9 whoops backwards python 3.9 will link to python And there we can see our Python is symbolically linked. So if I actually use that Python version command, it now works. So we've installed uh, FreeBSD into a virtual box. We've got our package system ready, installed the Python. And that's it for this video. What I'm going to do now is show you how to shut down. We use the shutdown command and dash P for power. We want to power off. And when do we want to shut down? Now. And there we are. That's the end of our little tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. Share it if you feel free. And have a nice day.